Okay, now, 15 years ago, Hyundai launched in this country the yeah. XL at $12,990. Yeah. And they coined the phrase, drive away, no more to pay. And that changed everything about the way we buy cars in this country. Yeah. It made it a consumer good. And for a while, it was the number one selling yeah. car in Australia. Yeah, they sold over 250-odd thousand Absolutely. of them. Phenomenal. Well, right now, uh, the Chinese are taking them on at that game. There's a new car coming out now called the Cherry that's on sale Cherry. for $10,990. Uh, it's a thing I'm guessing they're going to call Chinese takeaway, no more to pay. Yes. <laughs> well, they would if I was in charge of the publicity for it. Like but that got us not. thinking, you know, how good is this thing? So we went out and bought. We purchased the very first Cherry ever sold in Australia. Yeah, we did. In fact, when we went to register it, they didn't even have it on the database. They had to find us. Now, what we figured was uh, we didn't want one of us to go in because if they recognise our faces, they go, you guys are from Top Gear and you're going to destroy the car during a road test. Uh, so we sent someone along whose face they wouldn't recognise. As our staff member. So there's no way now that they will figure out that the car's gone to Top Gear. Now, anyone that's in the market to buy an $11,000 car isn't... 10990 10990 They're not really expecting the build quality of, say, a Rolls-Royce. No, oh, no, better. No, maybe the build quality of a Lada, right? A but, Lada. But, but the one thing you do want to know when you're buying such a car is how long will it last? Just how reliable is that car? Yep. So, we come up with a really simple test. In Australia, the average car is owned for about 9.3 years. Yep. So we decided to put 9.3 years worth of wear and tear to the test. The Cherry J1 packs an engine. It does zero to 100 eventually, and has not seven, but two airbags. ESP isn't an option. It looks like a mashup of every small car you've seen in about the last 10 years. Well, they're proud of their workmanship. They're showing off every nut and bolt under here. Look at that. You can actually see, <laughs> see them all. Steve, check the fit and finish. I didn't quite <laughs> finish the fit. To replicate 9.3 years of use, we'll push this car to its absolute limit by driving it non-stop for 24 hours. Oh. Flat out around Eastern oh. Creek. We're not even going to make the first lap. Lap one of some 950 laps. God help us. Down the front straight, look at that. Oh, 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 105, 110. Oh, 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 oh. Brake fade. It's not. <laughs> One lap. I'm not kidding, that went to the floor. So, filled with confidence in the sensational cherry, Pizzati gave us a pointless and rather tedious briefing. Not to miss out, there's yours. <laughs> and finally, we were off on our motoring misadventure. Crappy doors, shocking finish. You know what, you expect all that. You get what you pay for. To leave no stone unturned in the testing of our cherry, we've done something even Formula One hasn't thought of. Speed bumps in pit lane. And on the hourly change of driver, we'll be putting the doors and boot to the test. Over and over and over again. Oh, feel that awesome power of second gear. This car's like about, cars were like 15 years ago, you know? Like, it's solid enough, I suppose, but the plastics and the gaps between each of the door panels and so on, they're all different, different quality. And that's just what car makers have gotten better at over the years. That's the learning curve for the Chinese. After 74 laps, it was time for our resident racing maestro to work his magic and fulfill a boyhood dream. I always thought the first 24-hour test I'd do would be in something like a Porsche or a Ferrari at Le Mans, not a Cherry at Eastern Creek. Six hours into our extreme car test and the Cherry is chugging away like Thomas the Tank Engine on Valium. There's no mechanical problems, but the cherry's showing about as much personality as a fry pan. What the hell? Are you that bored? Do you want to go in reverse? I think reverse is the only thing that's going to keep me awake. Right, oh, well, that's got to be part of the test. We're going to do 9.3 years worth of reversing. Now, let me just work this out. So it's 350 metres. Oh, 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 ripple, ripple. We're going to do 169k. To do 9.3 years of reversing, you've got to do 43 laps. 
43. You know, at the moment, I'm doing about 6,000 revs. This thing <laughs> is going to explode. Now, because Pinhead Pizzati is hell-bent on making this test as scientific as possible, he's organised a series of crazy experiments loosely based on real-life events, such as replicating 9.3 years of wear and tear by cutting stroppy teenagers around in the back of your car. I'm just going to test the wear and tear of the back seat. Yeah, treat it like your mum's car. Perfect. Have a school up. Have a okay school up. Have a school up. Call yourself jilted teenagers. Hey, there's one down. And also dumping 9.3 years worth of rain on it. Come on, Shane, you pussy. Oh, that was pretty conclusive. Yes, it has windscreen wipers. And they sweep about 15% of the total windscreen area. Still, I'm dry. Each test is designed to cram in all the use and abuse the car will have to put up with in the suburban Cherry Bliss. Go, 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 go! <laughs> There's 200 kgs in the back. I weigh about 75, so it's 275 kilo payload. This car can only legally take 300 kilos. Wait, 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 wait. God, that was scary through there. Steve, did you say you wanted the coffee? Coffee? Yeah, God, God yes. Here it is. Twelve hours into our test and the cherry had stood firm, which gave us the sinking feeling that monotony rather than mechanics would be our biggest challenge. How's it going out there, mate? You reckon? I'm bored. I might have an idea. Hey, mate. Air travelling. Yeah, could use a stretch. Mine. Maria Venuti wrote a book. What, you want me to read while I'm driving? I don't expect you to read, mate. What I have organised. Maria Venuti! <laughs> And now put your lips forward. This is how you get your voice up to sing. <laughs> we're, we're, we're only doing one no, no, no. But Do you want to drive? I'll yeah, yeah, I'm done. No ni my view. Me di pinte volema. What are you doing? The testing council speed pumps. <laughs> Lucky I've got side airbags. What are you <laughs> Listen, you know, it might the introduction of Maria Venuti and her life story was just the beginning. You think it's a day? I don't give a face. I'm in the southwest. A troop of soldiers by my side. You with your girl? She sees the crew and she's like, bye bye guys. How the f you know and where the f you been at? How you know her? They laughing like sea lad. Can I just stop for a minute? Yep. Um, Channel 9 might have a couple of issues with your lyrics. But the cruelest blow was safe for last. Hey, Kenny. How are you, buddy? It's a shame, mate. Kenny, I should be the host of this show. Shame. Me and you. Capra and Kenny at Top Gear, number one. Look at the arms. Oh, rippers. Hit it up, boy. Yeah. I love it. I reckon I should host this show and kill it, because everyone knows me. I'm probably the most popular guy in Australia. Have you seen the billboards? Hitbeds.com. They're cheap and easy. Rims at red rates. You should wax your arms like that. Oh, look at the skin. You see me naked? Oh, I see me naked. Most people have. I only take what's mine. Oh, come on, Biachi. Let's get sideways. Let's get naked. Chip and easy. Now, because Jacobson started all of this, we thought we'd really make him suffer. I'm so glad that's him. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. Let's shut you up. <laughs> Not the bonnet. So we'd broken the board. What you want at three in the morning. Maybe it was time to get back to breaking the cherry. Oh, what are you doing? How 
many times do you reckon a car gets hit in 9.3 years at the shopping centre? Well, not many times at 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. At a... That was a year's worth. Hang on, I've got to get another 8.3 years worth out of it. <laughs> there you go. That's it. There you go. Done. 9.3 years. Shane. 22 hours and about 800 laps, I thought by now that we would have broken the cherry. Come on, enthusiasm, boys. Come on. But not even a door fell off. The only real fault we found was that this car, in every way, shape and form, was so, so incredibly dull. And I'll admit it, it got the better of me. did eventually wake up about an hour later Thank and we God. did finish yeah. the 24 hour challenge so we've got footage here of us finishing off the testing of the car all he's going to do is cross the line now yeah. Woo! Yahoo! good right. let's go home One thing we have to say, uh, look, it didn't blow up. The engine didn't explode in all a thousand pieces. No. Water didn't come pouring out of the bottom of it. The sump didn't fall out. The wheels didn't come off. Brakes didn't catch fire. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, Pagey, would you buy one? Hell no. <laughs> ba based on what? The thing's terrible value. Oh. We sure. can't say it's bad value. It's ten thousand nine hundred and ninety dollars. Yeah, but the purchase price isn't the value equation. The fact is, it was put together by blind people. No two bits yes. fit. Yeah, and you've got to remember that this car can't be registered in Victoria. It doesn't have electronic stability control, so can't be sold. Okay, well, they're really, really good points. <laughs> but okay, well, what car would you buy? Well, I would go for superior Indian build quality <laughs> with the fifteen hundred dollars more for the Suzuki Alto. Uh, well, that's now we're talking, there, isn't it? Okay. So you get six airbags. Yes. Yep. Paint colours look to vaguely match between all the panels, and the interiors are made out of banana skin. So I reckon you're Smells well ahead. Smells better too. Smells better. Yeah. Well, particularly after you've been in it. But yeah. yeah. All right. So that's what you got. And you? Yep. Would you buy the Cherry? No. Or would you go the Alto? No. I'd actually go a step further. Believe it or not, oh. I would spend another fifteen hundred bucks on this and get the class leading car. The Alto's not. It's a bit buzzy. It's not a really good car. It's not fun to drive. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Nissan Micra. This is the best car in the class. Same as the Alto, six mm. airbags. Yes. You get electronic stability control, a car that drives really nicely. And unlike the Cherry, yeah. when you take it away from the showroom floor, it's not worth $48. It's a very good point. It's another very good point. OK, uh, look, I do agree. I'm not going to argue. This mm. is about value for money. I'm going to take it just one step further again. If you're talking about value for money, handling, a bit more power and all that sort of stuff, People, if you just save a little bit more money, maybe do your paper round just for an extra two or three weeks. For just an extra $154,000, you can have one of these. Oh, yeah. They know I'm right. Uh, Nissan, Stalin, Godzilla. This is the Zilla designed by God. This is the best value for money car Absolutely. on the planet. And yeah. it's only a couple of pages up on the catalogue from the Micra. Yes, exactly. Uh, but it is. For 165 odd grand, mm. this is what you should be getting. But we should forget that. Uh, we're getting too excited about that. We've got mm. to stick on target here. It is the cherry we're discussing. And as you know, on this show, a tradition uh, has said that we must give the car that we're reviewing to the Stig to send around our track. Yeah. And then we had a bit of a thought about that and went, actually, no, that'd be really naff and crap. Yes. So we sent the Stig mm -hmm. around in one of these! OK, GTR. Now, remember, this is this year's update, the model year 11, and they've increased the power from 357 kilowatts to 390. It's actually the reason we wanted this car. Where does this thing go? It is brilliant. This is one of the favourite cars here at the Top Gear office. Absolutely. Sitting on the run, up to turn three and four down the hill. It, it does have launch control, which I'm assuming the Stig would have been smart enough to use. Yeah, which does actually, explain. interestingly, you had to turn the vehicle stability oh. control on 
to do the launch control, but on the run up to turn one, he's had to turn it off. Look at this thing. It's, uh, I mean, look, I, I'm, you're speaking of the converter here. Me and Pisser have driven these cars. They're unbelievably quick. Yep, and this thing is just on normal road tyres. Absolutely. Here we go. Using the six speed paddle shift on the. God, that is through the bus through the bus stop. He's only got a few corners to go. Look, he's already about to go across the line. And across the line. On the time. This car we is have... so fast. Go on, go on, go on. Now, go on. just to explain the board a bit more clearly, the top of the board at the moment is the V8 supercar from last season. Which isn't it a is... production car. You can't Right, it is can't... a race car, so, yep. But well, the fastest uh, road car is the GT2. These two cars have had a stoush for a long time, yeah? So that's, that's the old. That's the old GDR. That's yeah. the 09 GDR. Come on, come the on. The new this. Nissan GTR does it in a 1.22. Put it on top, is it? You That's know what? Goes. We're going to put that there because that is a supercar and that is the fastest car on our board. Well, round of applause for the GTR. Brilliant.